Howdy cowboys and cowgirls, I'm Cowboy Jack and today I'm really excited. We're here at the Learning Zoo in the Woodlands, Texas and we're going to get to see, meet, touch and learn about all kinds of really cool animals. Maybe like some porcupines, some prairie dogs, a bull snake, all kinds of stuff. I'm not even sure what zookeeper Drew has in here. Come on, let's go inside and check it out. Boy, I just love learning about animals and I really like it somewhere like this where we can get up close and personal with them and see what they're like in their natural habitat. All right, guys, are you ready? Oh, wow. Oh, hey, Zookeeper Drew. Hey, Cowboy Jack, how, how are, are you doing? I'm doing fantastic today. Great. Hey, Welcome you know back. what? We've been here once before, haven't yeah, we? you have. Well, this is awesome. Thanks for having us back. Absolutely. I mean, the second we walk in the door, we're just surrounded by all kinds of animals. So you have like a bunch of reptiles in here? We do. We have lizards, we have snakes and tortoises and frogs. Wow, look at this guy here. He's looking at me, but his eyes are moving all around the place. That's a, a veiled chameleon? Mm-hmm. Her name is Rapunzel, and her eyes can look in two directions at once. So she can see if there's any bugs in the tree with her or if anything's going to try and grab her. Boy, I just love those eyes. She moves them all around. But hey, I heard you had a porcupine here. That's right, we have two porcupines. Two porcupines? Mm -hmm. What kind of porcupines? They are called African crested porcupines because they have a big mohawk on top of their heads. That is so cool. Well, can we meet them? Absolutely. All right, let's go check them out. All right, follow me. There's literally animals everywhere you look. This is so cool. Franklin, come on out. He is hanging out in there with our tortoises. There he is, Franklin. Oh, wow, look at that little guy. So Franklin is a baby African crested porcupine. He's only two months old and he loves attention, just like any little baby. Wow. Now he's got these spines on his back and those could be dangerous, right? They could be. They're pretty sharp and he uses those to protect himself from animals that want to eat him. So those quills, those spines on his back are really sharp and they can stand up when he's nervous or when he thinks he's in trouble and they'll protect him if anything tries to attack him. <laughs> and he is having a great time playing hey with that Franklin, ball. Hey Franklin, how's it going buddy? He's wow. still a baby, he's getting bigger every day. Franklin, station. Target. So what I'm doing is teaching him to touch his nose to the end of that ball, and then when he hears that click sound, he gets a treat. That is so neat. And that helps us move him around because he is hard to pick up. <laughs> I bet he is hard station. to pick up with all those little spines. Good job, buddy. Wow, and he's holding it with his two hands. He really likes that. Mm-hmm. Porcupines love eating roots like sweet potatoes and carrots. They like corn and fruit, and sometimes they even eat leaves. Well, I've got to be honest. I've never seen a porcupine out in the wild, but I know we have them here in Texas. We do. But they're not this kind. No, so the ones we have here in Texas live in trees, and they love to climb and eat leaves and bark but they still have those sharp quills to protect themselves. Yeah, the, the only ones I've ever heard of or, or known people that have encountered them have been in the top of cedar bushes way out in West Texas. That's right, we actually don't have them here in this part of Texas, but um, you can find them in a lot of other places. And these porcupines live in Africa and they love to dig. Hey buddy. So they live underground, they dig burrows for themselves where it's cool during the day and warm at night. <laughs> Hey Franklin, boy I just love this guy. He's got these really cool whiskers, kind of just like a cat or a dog. Exactly, they do the same thing as a cat's whiskers too. They help him feel what's around his face. Oh, I think he found an acorn to eat. So Cowboy Jack, do you know what a porcupine's quills are made out of? I don't. 
their hair, just like the hair you and I have. But each hair is long and stiff and kind of sharp. But when he gets nervous, they'll stand up just like a cat's tail puffs out. Okay. And that's what makes them spiky. Well, and I guess that's pretty cool that they're like here. So that way, if he actually has to use one of them, he gets to grow a new one, right? Exactly. If it pokes a predator like a leopard or a lion in Africa, it will stick into their face or their paw and pull out of his skin, just like you could pull a hair out of our head. And then he'll grow a new one. Wow. Hey, could I try giving him a treat? Sure. Let's see. Here's a little bit of sweet potato. You can just hold right. that out and hey, he'll come Franklin, take it. Come right here, buddy. Come here, bud. Porcupines don't have very good eyesight though, so you need to make sure he can smell it. I was just trying to make sure the kiddos at home got to see him real close. Look at that. Hey, buddy. And if you look closely, he's got really big <laughs> buck teeth at the front of his mouth that he uses to chew because he's a rodent, just like a rat or a mouse or a hamster. I had no idea that porcupines were in the rodent family. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, and those teeth never stop growing. So he'll use them to chew on things like wood and roots and other tough foods to make sure that uh, he can eat them. And the teeth keep growing to replace what gets worn down. Well, Zookeeper Drew, I think Franklin here really likes me. He's exploring my boots and sniffing around. I'm like his little jungle gym today. Mm -hmm. He's not a very good climber, but he loves climbing on people's feet. <laughs> well, now, what is he going to look like when he gets full grown? Well, he's going to look a lot like this, but he's going to be much bigger. Okay. Porcupines are one of the biggest rodents in the world. So, would you like to see what he's going to look like in a couple years? Yeah, guys, you want to see that? That'd be really cool. All right. Well, let's go meet Willow. All right. Wow, guys, so here we are back here in Willow's enclosure, and she's a full grown African porcupine. Zookeeper Drew over here is trying to get her to come out and say hi to us. Now she's down in her burrow, right? Yes, so a burrow is a hole that an animal digs uh, and uses the, as their home. Wow, hi, Willow. look at there she Good is. Morning. What a pretty girl. Good morning, Willow. So she is a two-year-old African crested porcupine. And for them, two years old is grown up. So she's as big as she's going to be. Wow, well, guys, come around this out. side so you can see down in her burrow. She looks really cozy in there. So the nice thing about a burrow is that during the day it's nice and cool and it's not as hot as it would be outside and at night it's usually a little bit warmer. Yeah, I was thinking because her home in Africa it probably gets pretty hot. It gets hot just like it does here in Texas in the summer. So she goes underground to avoid the sun and the heat and then at night she comes out and she looks for food. Wow. She is absolutely beautiful. How much does she weigh, do you think? Um, she weighs about 35 pounds. 35 mm -hmm. pounds? Wow, that's bigger than some of my puppy dogs. Yeah. And she's got a lot of quills. They're really long, so she looks bigger than she is. But I'm going to see if she can come out and say hi to us so you can see her uh, up on the ground. Willow. Willow, target. <laughs> She looks like she's peeking out and taking a look at Cowboy Jack. Wow, look at those beautiful quills. And just like Franklin, those are her hair. So they grow right out of her skin. And she has two different types of quills. There are long, skinny ones that are just like any other hair. They're kind of like the whiskers on a cat. And then there are short, stiff quills that she uses to poke anything that's trying to hurt her. Willow. Wow, hi Willow. Guys, look at those quills from the backside. It's a, it's almost looks kind of like a peacock does spreading its feathers and kind of showing what's up. Exactly. Now she has them all spread out. Does that mean she's a little bit nervous right now? Uh, she might be a little bit nervous or she might just be excited. Yeah, because well, I'm somebody some new we've never met before. Exactly. So I'll introduce myself. Hi, Willow, I'm Cowboy Jack. I like to make really cool videos for kids and today you're gonna be a star on my show. <laughs> I don't think she was very impressed with me. Well, she doesn't have internet. <laughs> we, we should fix that. I think we could put an antenna out here so she could catch my show. Yeah, maybe we can use her quills. <laughs> wow, and I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but she's crunching on that treat really loud. Get up a little bit closer so you can see. What a beautiful, majestic animal. Those quills are huge. Some of those really big ones hanging down straight. Mm -hmm. She likes to walk around and hang out just like her little buddy Franklin. 
And Franklin's actually gonna grow to be this size, right? Yeah, it'll take him a little bit to get that big, but he's going to be at least as big as her one day. So since her quills are hair, sometimes they fall out. Oh, you're and sweet And this girl. is one of her quills that fell out in her burrow. Oh, wow, that is really cool. Now you're sniffing all around me. I bet you smell my puppy dogs. Mm -hmm. They have a really good sense of smell. So usually if they are interested in something, they're gonna check it out with their nose because they can't see very well. Now look at this, guys. This is one of her quills, just like Zookeeper Drew said. Now is this one of her defensive quills? Yes, so those are one of the shorter, sharp ones that she uses to poke things. And uh, they actually get even bigger than that. There are some that are longer than a pencil. That is so cool. This one's, I mean, this seems like something you could write with, like at school or anywhere. That's really unique. And like he said, these are actually made out of hair. It's like an ad advanced, really strong hair that she's got. Ow, I even poked myself. Now with this, you can actually Stay bend in. it. It's not really, really hard. Still a little flexible, but it is tough. So what I've asked her to do is station. And that basically means that she is going to stand with her front feet on that big square rock and stand up really tall. And that lets people get a really good look at her quills and that crest of hair on top of her head. Wow. And when she's excited, the quills and the crest will stand up to make her look really big. I'm giving her little treats. She's getting some fruit like peaches. She's getting sweet potato. She's getting a few other things that she really likes. So she's having a great time. <laughs> she looks like she's having a great time. So a lot of people think that porcupines can shoot their quills. Yeah, and they I've think, seen that on TV, mm -hmm. like cartoons. Right, they think that the quills go flying out and stick into things, but that's not true. The quills are just like our hair. I can't make my hair fly off my head. But if she's attacked by something like a lion or a leopard in Africa, she'll turn her back on them and make those quills stand up, and then she'll actually run backwards at that animal. Oh, wow. And if they don't get out of there, they're going to get poked. Yeah, they're not going to have a very good day. But I don't think Miss Willow wants that to happen. I think she's actually really sweet. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give her a treat? Absolutely. Come here, Willow. Willow, go, hey girl. go, to, go over there. There you go. Boy, she does have some big front teeth. Mm -hmm. And look how she's holding it with her paws. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, those paws are also how she digs that big burrow we saw. She's just like a dog. She'll dig the dirt out with her front feet and then kick it back out of the hole with her back feet. Wow. Now that I've seen her up close like this and really observed her hair and her ears and eyes, I can see why she's part of the rodent family. They have these really pretty whiskers and everything. <laughs> Hi, Willow. You're just like a little puppy dog. Boy, what a pretty girl. And how old would you say she is? She's about two years old, which is uh, kind of like being a teenager or a young adult for a porcupine. Okay. They can live about as long as a dog, about 15 to 20 years. So Willow will be around for a long time. And porcupines in the wild usually live with their mate. So a male and a female will live in a burrow together and any babies they have will live with them until they're about a year old. And then they leave home just like human kids going to college. That is really cool. You know what, she reminds me of somebody. Have you guys seen that movie Sing and Sing 2? She looks just like the rock star on there. That is so cool. Now, Cowboy Jack, do you think that porcupines are able to swim? Ooh, that's a tough one. Well, she's got really cool legs, and I bet those quills could help her float. I'm gonna say yes, I think they can swim. That's right, so her quills are full of air. They're hollow, just like a straw. So that means that she floats really well, station. And she is able to cross rivers, and sometimes porcupines just paddle around in shallow water on cool days, just Help like- them cool off? Yeah, just like we'd go to the, sw the swimming pool. <laughs> that is so cool. And guys, look how concentrated those quills are at the back of her backside there. It's like a, almost like a paddle tail all put together. It's mm -hmm. so cool. Yep, her tail is pretty long, just like a beaver, and she doesn't swim with it, but if she's nervous, she'll shake her tail and rattle it, just like a rattlesnake. Wow. So they actually use that as a, as a defense mechanism too? As a kind warning of, too. Kind and of they'll, warn predators? They'll sometimes stomp their foot too, just you, like a skunk. You would think by this day and age, predators would know, hey, this is a porcupine, maybe I shouldn't mess with it. 
But you I would guess, think. I guess some have to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the problem is that every year there's new leopards and lions being born that have to learn how to hunt for themselves. Yeah. And they don't know what a porcupine is. So usually it's young leopards who've just left home. Their mom isn't there to tell them, get away from the porcupine, you're going to get poked. And they're the ones that try to eat porcupines. Okay. Well, Miss Willow, it sure was a pleasure getting to meet you. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. One day I've never hung out with a porcupine, the next day I'm right here with you hanging out. Wow, Zookeeper Drew, what are we looking at here? These are black-tailed prairie dogs. So they are another member of the rodent family. They're actually cousins of squirrels. You can probably tell from the way she's climbing, but these <laughs> guys don't live in trees. They live underground in tunnels. Hi, Billy, good morning. Wow. Hey guys, come over here. Oh, do you hear her yelling? Hi. So that is how prairie dogs say hello to each other. They go That is so cool. I've never even seen a prairie dog before, and here I am petting one. Yeah, so prairie dogs live right here in Texas. They live in flat, open plains and prairies, and they get the name prairie dog because they bark and uh, yip like that. That is so unique and so cool. I love it. She's got those long claws to help her dig just like a dog. Her ears are really tiny, so when oh, she's wow. underground, dirt doesn't get into them. But I've heard they have really good hearing. They do. They have amazing hearing and eyesight. And just like other rodents, <laughs> they have those big chewing teeth at the oh, front of her wow. mouth. She does have some big chompers. Yep. Oh, and I think she's going to nip me if I don't put her back soon. <laughs> I hear, I hear you, Billy. All right, well, have fun back in your cage. Thanks for meeting us real quick. So prairie dogs live in groups called prairie dog towns. And each prairie dog town can have hundreds or even thousands of prairie dogs living there together. No, Billy, you can't come out. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there's another one. That's Luis. Oh, wow. Look at him creeping out of there. And normally they're not as friendly as Billy. They're a little bit shyer because a lot of things want to eat them in the wild. So when they do come up out of their tunnels underground, they protect themselves by having lookouts. One or two of them will stand up on their back legs and look around, and if they see something dangerous like a coyote or a bobcat or a snake, they sound the alarm to let the other prairie dogs know what to look out for. That's what I was thinking about. Here in Texas, we've got, we've got coyotes, we've got bobcats, we even have mountain lions, you know, all kinds of things probably are trying to get a snack out of these prairie dogs. So that's great that they use a buddy system and have a lookout. Exactly. <laughs> and they I love eating really grass likes, yeah. and roots and other plants. Hi, yes, I see you. That is so cool. He's a really social one. He mm -hmm. likes you a lot. So Billy actually used to be a pet. Uh, when she was a baby, somebody kept her as a house pet but that was not a very good idea. Prairie dogs don't make as good of a pet as a dog or a cat does. Yeah, I'm sure they need their room to dig, right? And they do, and they need lots of company and attention. Because they live together all the time, they don't do well when they're alone. So if you have to go to school or work and you leave them alone all day, they're not very happy about that. Oh, I get that, like separation anxiety from a prairie dog. Exactly. <laughs> And so uh, her owners had to find a new home for her, and she came here to the learning zoo. But she was still pretty lonely because she was our only prairie dog. So we uh, were able to bring three others in. Luis, Thelma, and Tex all came together. And now all four of them live together, and they have tunnels that run around underground in here. And in those tunnels, they have different rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, pantries. They have nurseries uh, that they would use for babies. There are even hidden back doors so they can escape if something follows them into their tunnels to try and catch them. That is so cool. Now, do they dig actually under this enclosure? Uh, no, we actually have concrete under here, so they can dig about two feet underground and then they have to stop. But that is plenty of room for these four prairie dogs. Yeah, they look like they're having a really great time mm -hmm. in there. You can see this dirt is really hard and tough, just like it would be outside on the plains. But prairie dogs' nails help them dig and turn that over, and they actually help the grass grow taller and thicker because they help the dirt get turned over and plowed up, and it makes it easier for the roots to grow. Well, that's real important for our ecosystem because we all know what happens when the prairie grasses don't make it. Mm -hmm. The Dust Bowl. If you guys haven't read about Jeez. the Dust Bowl yet, you need to take a look at it. It was really interesting. Oh, she was eating a sweet potato. Oh, there Look we go. Look at that, she's sitting up on her back legs and showing you how she likes to enjoy a treat. 
Yep, they use their front paws just like hands to hold their food while they eat. <laughs> now, prairie dogs have a lot of animals that want to eat them, like you said, coyotes and bobcats and dogs and hawks. And so if a lookout prairie dog sees something dangerous, they let the other prairie dogs know, but they have different sounds for different predators. So if they see a coyote, they'll make one noise. And if they see a snake, they'll make another noise. So the other prairie dogs know what to look out for. Oh, that makes perfect sense because if they see a hawk, they need to be looking out from above. But if they see a snake, they need to be looking from ground level. Mm-hmm. And snakes can sometimes even follow them into their tunnels. Ooh, so they need to be really like a careful. Good situation. So here at the Learning Zoo, we actually have a snake that lives in the same place as these prairie dogs. And she is uh, called a bull snake. Would you like to meet her? Absolutely. All right. Wow, guys. Well, this is an actual native Texan right here with us. The bull snake that Zookeeper Drew was saying uh, is in the same climate and same area as those prairie dogs right behind That's us. That's right. So this is Hufflepuff, and she is a bull snake. And bull snakes are actually one of the natural predators of prairie dogs. So they're not venomous. That means their bite doesn't kill things on its own. They have to grab their food and wrap it up, and they will go down into the burrows of prairie dogs and ground squirrels and gophers, and they'll eat them in their tunnels. Wow. So if she <laughs> smells a prairie dog hole, she's going to go down into that hole, and she'll use that tongue to smell where the food is. Are it's you trying to say hi to me? It has two tips, <laughs> so she can tell whether that prairie dog is down one tunnel or the other tunnel, and then okay. when she finds them, she'll wrap them up, squeeze them, and eat them. Well, you are absolutely beautiful. Now, she's called a bull snake because when she feels like she's in danger, she can get really ornery, just like a big bull. Oh, wow. And the way they protect themselves from predators like coyotes is really cool. So they are not venomous, but they will mimic and act like a rattlesnake. Really? How do they do that? Well, they will flatten their head out so it looks wide and triangular, just like a rattlesnake's head. Oh, I can kind of see that right there. Mm -hmm. They'll also coil up in the same position that a rattlesnake does, and they shake their tail back and forth. Okay. And when they hiss, it sounds really deep and raspy, just like a snake's rattle. It sounds kind of like this. Oh, wow. And that will convince predators like bobcats or hawks that this is a dangerous rattlesnake that they need to leave alone. That is so unique and cool. Boy, she has such a beautiful pattern. Mm-hmm. Even her markings look kind of like a rattlesnake. That's what I was going to say. It looks just like a regular diamondback rattlesnake. And her scales cover her whole body. They protect her skin when she's crawling around or going underground. And each scale has a little ridge down the middle of it called a keel. So if you pet her, she feels really bumpy and rough. Oh, yeah. Wow. Boy, and look at her tail. I mean, she's got such a long body all the way down here. And these, the pattern changes as you go along. It actually gets darker back here. Mm -hmm. That yes. means that it's harder for an animal to see her from the air, like a hawk or an eagle. Because when you look at her on the ground, you're not going to see a snake that's all one color. You're going to see a bunch of different spots and blotches and patterns. And that means that it's harder to see where she is. Yeah, if Cowboy Jack wants to hide out in the woods, I have to wear camouflage. Mm -hmm. She's lucky. She's got it built in, right? Exactly. Wow. Their friend that they try to mimic, the rattlesnake, I know the timber rattlers are struggling right now, mm -hmm. right? A lot of snakes are. Yeah. Because even though they help people by uh, catching and eating rodents like rats and mice, a lot of people are scared of snakes. They think that they're dangerous or they're mean or nasty, when really they're just like any other animal. They want to live their lives and eat some food and not be eaten by anything else. And so most snakes are very, very safe as long as you leave them alone. Yeah, absolutely. That's the same with, you know, bugs and all kinds mm -hmm. of things. Just like, you know, if you find a, a honeybee nest, well, honeybees are extremely important to our environment, right? Mm -hmm. And they help us get the food that we eat and everything. But when people get them in their house, they get really concerned. But the best thing to do, kind of like when you encounter a snake, would be to contact a professional and see if you can get it relocated, right? Exactly. And if it's in your house or it's in your yard, you can see if you can have it moved. If you see a snake when you're out walking in the woods or hiking, 
that's that snake's home. That's where they belong. Right, so, so we just pick a different path, yep. walk around and mm -hmm. try not to disturb them. Exactly, you're in their home. That's beautiful. Hufflepuff. Her name is Hufflepuff because when she gets upset, she huffs and she puffs. <laughs> well, Hufflepuff, it was so great to meet you. I really appreciate your time. Now, Zookeeper Drew, I see a, a very interesting container with some very interesting items in it. That's there. right. So we have some shrimp and we have some whole fish too. And these were frozen, but we warmed them up in some hot water because we are going to be feeding one of our very special lizards. Wait a second, is this Toothless? Yes, you've met him before. We have. So last time we were here, we were feeding Toothless some little baby cockroaches, mm -hmm. and he was very small. Yes, he was only about two months old the last time you were here, and now he's over a year old, and he has gotten a lot bigger. Wow, let's go check him out. Oh, here we are, right in his enclosure. Hi, Toothless. Guys, that is Toothless. Wow, look at him. So he is an Asian water monitor, and these guys are cousins of Komodo dragons. So he is still growing. He's gonna get a lot bigger than this. How big will he get? He'll get about seven feet long. Oh so they're my the goodness. second biggest lizard in the world after Komodo dragons. That is absolutely incredible. You know, a lizard this size, I bet that's where some of the folklore and fairy tales that we've heard of actually originated from. That's right. So another name for this type of lizard is actually a black dragon because he is black all over his body and he looks kind of like a dragon. Boy, he does look like a dragon. That is so cool. Hey, buddy. So he's very, very friendly. Oh, and you can see he's shedding some of the skin on his back. Because he's growing, those scales are getting too small for him. So he needs to replace them with larger scales and the old ones just fall off. That is so cool. Boy, what a unique critter. Guys, look at his claws. He's got really big claws. I bet that's to, is that to help him climb? That is. So in the wild, water monitors will eat almost anything they can catch. They love fish and shrimp, but they also eat bird eggs. And to find them, they'll climb up into trees. They also eat things like uh, smaller lizards and snakes and sometimes even rats and mice. And one of their favorite foods is turtle eggs. Oh, wow. Guys, look how long his tail is. Boy, Toothless, you've got a really long tail. That is so cool. Boy, what, a, what an amazing animal. Toothless. So he has really good eyesight and that long tongue helps him smell. He does so have a really long tongue. If he sees this fish wiggling around and he's still hungry, he's probably gonna come over and try to eat it. What do you think, buddy? Are you full already? That was a pretty big breakfast for you. He said, oh, I might put that yeah, in. Yeah, he'll save that for later. Goes, Can you box that up for me? I'm gonna take that one to go. Does he like to be petted? He does. Uh, he's kind of like a cat. He doesn't come to you for attention like a dog will, but usually he's okay with you touching him. And <laughs> uh, if you have food, he's really okay with it. Boy, that is so cool. And his skin is so rough and gray. Yeah, those scales protect him when he's crawling around because he has to climb trees and chase animals through bushes. And sometimes he has to run away from danger himself. Well, Zookeeper Drew, it looks like he's climbing up you and he's yeah. got some pretty big claws. Yeah, he is. <laughs> when he was a baby, he would sit up on top of my head and look down off the edge of my hat. But now he's a little too big for that. Yep, but there he's going to he climb all the right way down, down my down leg like I'm a tree. <laughs> Boy, he's got a great personality. He likes to have a good time. Mm -hmm. I think he was playing a joke on you there. <laughs> the reason he has that long tail is so that he can swim just like a crocodile or an alligator. When he's in the water, that tail pushes him forward and he tucks his legs against his body. Oh, wow. And if he's ever attacked by another animal, like a tiger or leopard or a dog, he can use it to defend himself by swiping it back and forth and whipping them. Ooh. Well, I wouldn't want to be on the losing end of that tail. It looks heavy. Mm -hmm. And he's still only about half as big as he'll be one day. That is crazy. He I could get twice the size. Oh, we're going to have to keep an eye on this guy. I can't wait to see him when he gets full grown. And how many years is it until they're full grown? It takes them about four years. Okay. They so. grow really fast when they're little. So he grew a lot the first year, but now it's going to slow down a little bit and he's going to get uh, bigger more slowly. Okay. Well guys, it's really cool to get to see Toothless like this. Because if you remember, right over here, this picture I'm showing you is just how big he was the last time we were here, a little bit over a year ago. Wow. 
Wow, Zookeeper Drew, this is a completely different type of animal you've got here. That's right, this is Elsa and she is a pony. Elsa, kind of like on Frozen? Exactly, because I she has it. beautiful hey, white hair. How you doing, baby? Boy, what a beautiful animal. So, Cowboy Jack, do you know what the difference is between a pony and a horse? Mmm, you know, I honestly don't. Well, a pony is just a really small horse. So, all ponies are horses, but if they're below a certain size, a if their shoulder- of hands? Right, so if their shoulder is below a certain point, then they're a pony. Wow. So she is just a very, very small horse, but she's not a baby. She's nine years old, and she loves treats. I love it. Miss Elsa, you even have a little bit of color there to your hair, don't you? Mm-hmm. So a horse's mane is hair, just like our hair, and just like us, sometimes uh, she gets it colored a little bit. <laughs> that is so cool. So normally her hair would be white, all through her mane, but right now it's a little pink and purple because she wanted to feel special. I get it, I get it. Hey, if you guys look at my hair, you know, I keep it all natural. Hey, wait a second. I think these guys are laughing at my hair. <laughs> all right, I'll put my hat back on. Elsa, were you laughing at my hair? I don't think you were. You're such a pretty girl. That is so cool. And so unlike the reptiles that we've seen and, and like uh, Toothless that we just met, she actually has hoofs and not claws, That's right? right. So she has one hoof on each foot, and that's actually her toenail. Wow. So it grows just like our fingernails and toenails do, and horses sometimes need to have a special uh, nail manicurist called a farrier come out and trim their hooves so they can walk around normally. That is so cool. I didn't think about that, but it's a like a toenail, it's constantly growing. So it needs to be trimmed if they're not walking on rocks and exactly. things like that. I'm sorry, girl. She's like, why'd you clap in my face? I was just making a point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but do you see how big her eyes are? Yeah, she does have big eyes. She has really big eyes so she can see really well. And they're on the sides of her head instead of the front like with us. So she can see almost all the way around her body. Oh wow, I didn't so, ever think about even that. Even though she's looking right at me, she can see something that's almost all the way behind her without turning her head. Yeah. Boy, she is like all muscle. And wow, what an amazingly soft coat. Mm -hmm. You know, we've ridden a lot of horses and talked and met a lot of horses on the show. None of them have hair just quite like this. I mean, she feels softer than some of my puppy dogs. <laughs> mm -hmm. What a beautiful animal. So ponies are really strong for their size and they don't eat as much as full-sized horses. I know it's hard to believe when she's gobbling up these treats, but <laughs> she doesn't need as much food as a full-grown horse that somebody might ride. Yeah. So a long time ago, before there were cars and trucks, people used ponies to carry heavy loads for them or to pull a cart. Wait a second, like the Pony Express? Exactly. I get it. Because those ponies could run or walk for a long time without getting tired, and they didn't need as much food as a full-grown horse. That is so really they were cool. kind of like a Toyota Prius. <laughs> I get it, yeah. You can drive a lot further in a Toyota Prius than you can in my F-150. Mm -hmm. yep, I'm gonna run out of gas a lot sooner, just like a full-grown horse would run out of gas before the pony would. You can probably hear her smacking at home. She has really big teeth for chewing up grass and other plants. And her lips are really soft and sensitive. She uses them just like we use our fingers. And they're covered in whiskers so she can feel what's around her face when she's eating. I tell you what, her temperament is just fantastic. She is such a sweetheart. I love it. Elsa, thanks for hanging out with Cowboy Jack. I know you didn't plan on meeting me today, but it sure has been a good time, right? Now we're back inside the Learning Zoo building here. And Zookeeper Drew's gonna show us a really unique critter. You know, they have a lot of really cool big animals, but they also have some really cool small animals. That's what right. do you have there for us? This is Caesar, the Emperor Scorpion. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So he is an awesome little animal. Scorpions are actually cousins of spiders. So they have eight legs, just like a spider, but they also have those two big claws at the front of their body that they use to grab food. And he has that long tail with a stinger on the end that he uses to help him catch his food. Now, is he considered like a crustacean or a uh, arachnid? He is an arachnid. Okay. So he has a shell, an exoskeleton, just like uh, a lobster or a crab or a beetle or a spider, 
but he uses his claws to grab food and usually he'll just squish them. Uh, he eats things like cockroaches and beetles and other small insects. So when he's walking around, he has little hairs on the front of those claws. And if they brush against something, that tells him what's around him. And he can reach out and grab that food and then squish it. But if it's a little bit too hard for him to squish, maybe it has a hard shell like a beetle, then he uses that long stinger on his tail to poke his food and pump it full of venom to help break it down. That is so cool. Now we have a lot of scorpions here in Texas. In fact, I've even found them in my own yard here mm -hmm. in spring. But these guys don't look anything like the scorpions we have. That's right, so they are from Africa. They actually live in the same place as the porcupines we met earlier. Okay. And they love to live underneath rocks and logs, and they usually come out at night when it's a little cooler and when their food is out and easy to find, and when they're harder for birds and lizards to see and eat. Boy, that is so cool. I just absolutely love the way he looks. But now if you saw this kind of scorpion, or the kind of regular scorpions we have here in Texas. It's just kind of like snakes. You don't want to bug them. Now, of course, if they're in, their, in your house, you can relocate them outside. But outside is where they live, and they actually do a lot of good for the environment. That's right. They're sting, the, the kind of scorpions we have here in Texas, if they sting you, it just kind of feels like a bee or a hornet sting. Mm -hmm. It hurts, but it's not dangerous for most people. Right. Um, and the same thing is true for him. Even though emperor scorpions are the biggest type of scorpion in the world. He is a really big scorpion. Their venom is not that dangerous. Yeah. Because they have those big claws to do most of the work for them when they're hunting. Scorpions are really tough. They're survivors. They live all over the world and they can handle some really harsh conditions. Dry, hot deserts. They can handle cold weather. They don't need to eat very often, just like a snake. And I that didn't know shell they could, protects I didn't them. know they could handle cold weather. In the winter, they'll find a nice dark area underneath a rock or a log somewhere underground, and they will uh, hibernate and wait for spring when it warms up. Okay, that is so cool. Now there's one other thing about scorpions that is really amazing. What's that? Well, their shell is made out of something that glows in a certain type of light. What? So I'm gonna put him in this box for a second so I have my hands free. That way he doesn't wander off and I was gonna get say, lost. if you expect me to hold him, I'm still a little bit scared. This is my first right. time seeing a scorpion. I'm gonna put him right size. there. So there's a type of light from the sun called ultraviolet or UV light. Right, that's the same kind of sun, sunlight and, and rays that we wear sunscreen to protect ourselves exactly, against. Exactly, because it can give us a sunburn, but we can't see it. Uh, you can only see a sunburn that it causes. Right. But for birds and lizards and some other animals, they can see that light like another color in the rainbow. Oh, wow. And I have a special flashlight with me right here that shows uh, UV light. And when you shine it at certain things, they glow, including scorpions. Oh my goodness, he just turned green. That's right. So to a, a bird or lizard or any other animal that can see ultraviolet light, this is what a scorpion looks like when they're out in the sunshine. They that glow like a neon crazy. sign. And so, but that's important for his survival, right? Because there's certain circumstances where that would be better camouflage for him, but there's also certain circumstances where it would make him stand out more. Right. Too. So usually these guys come out at night when it's as dark as possible, because if a bird or a lizard sees that, they're going to go and eat that scorpion most of the time. <laughs> and he doesn't want to be eaten, so he comes out when it's dark and there's no sunlight uh, that can give him away because without it, he looks black and he blends in on the ground. But with that sunlight or that UV light, he looks really, really different. That is crazy. Even his claws, his front pinchers look a lot different because now that he's uh, glowing like that, we can see those little bitty bumps he has all over it mm -hmm. and really kind of see those little hairs you were telling us about that he uses to sense things. That is so cool. And all scorpions glow like this. All of them? Yes. Even, I had no idea. Even if they've been dead for a very long time and they're fossilized like a dinosaur bone, their fossilized exoskeleton will still glow like this. That's absolutely incredible. And I just can't believe it. it's like an instant transformation. Now he's back to black. Boy, that was really cool. Thank you for showing You're us You're welcome. That. 
Wow, well, Zookeeper Drew, we've had such an amazing time here at your amazing place for kids right here in the woodlands. Well, thanks. I'm glad you were able to come out today. I absolutely love coming to the Learning Zoo, and Cowboy Caden really loves it too. Last time we were here, he had such a blast, it was hard to get him to leave. <laughs> but we had so much fun learning about all these animals and boy, you've got some really incredible new critters too. So I just want to say real quick, thanks for having us again. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Cowboys and cowgirls, make sure you click subscribe to Cowboy Jack on YouTube. That way you can come with us on all of our adventures because we go on a lot of them, just like we were here today with my buddy Zookeeper Drew. But hey, Zookeeper Drew, I have one more question for sure. you. Sure. You know, at the end of the show, I always tell everybody bye and then we do the yeehaw. Do you think I could convince you to do the yeehaw with me? I would love to. Awesome. All right. Well, until I see y'all next time, one, two, three. Yeehaw! Yeehaw!